I agree, Brent, especially these youngsters now. But we've come across the Nguhuma Pride who have moved from where they were this morning. And we left them in some very, very thick vegetation. And they have just moved into some more very, very thick vegetation. And that's just because they're trying to escape the heat that is upon us today. And I can still only see three lionesses, but all six cubs are here. Now the problem is, is that we're wedged between a couple of Tamboiti trees, is it? So we've stumbled across a little Tamboiti thicket and uh, they're big trees. So it makes for maneuvering quite difficult. So we'll have to see what we can do. Hopefully it does cool down in an hour or so and then we will hopefully get them moving out of this area. But I must warn you, because it is such a tight space, there are quite a few vehicles out on safari this afternoon and I know that they would love to come and see the lions. So perhaps what we'll do is we'll just sit here for a couple of minutes and I think we can only really fit one vehicle in here, which is a pity but the other guides I'm sure won't be too long and we can go off and look at the hippos at Buffles Hook Dam and then once the spot opens up again we'll come back here but for the meantime we can enjoy it and I'm not going to be fooled by these ladies because it's then, they've done this to us a number of times where they sort of wake up from a mid-afternoon siesta and they start to groom themselves which is normally an indication that they're going to wake up and get moving I suspect that this is not the case though Look at her, she doesn't look like she's ready to go anywhere just yet. Your eyes are barely open. So I think that she's just having a little groom, a little stretch, and she'll probably roll back over and go to sleep again until the temperature decreases slightly. Look at that, trying to pull off any parasites that are lying underneath her hair. And especially at the moment, I think they're going to have to do quite a large amount of grooming more so than in the winter months because of after all the rain you get a burst of ticks and I've seen a lot of those pepper ticks those tiny ticks that are almost the size of a pinhead all on the grass at the moment and I'm sure there'll be plenty of bond ticks about too so they'll need to keep themselves of course nice and clean but they're looking so healthy which is really good I remember that we are on a live safari, so if you have any questions about the Nguhumas, I'd love to hear from you. You can hashtag safari live. Oh, bless you. You can do that on Twitter, or you can send us an email, questions at wildearth.tv. Let's see what she's going to do now. No, don't go lay there. Michael, you're commenting on the shape of the pupils versus domestic cats uh, versus lions. And you're saying that, and you just said that lion pupils are round, whereas cats uh, seem to be more vertical. And you're wondering why. That's a very good question. Perhaps it's got something to do uh, with uh, their eyesight at night. But then I also think to myself, domestic cats are also predominantly nocturnal. They spend the most of their days lounging about, doing absolutely nothing. And then when night comes along, my goodness, and you hear the screeches from the males having out on patrol and hunt occur too. So I'm not actually sure about that, but I suspect it's got something to do with their light absorbing abilities. But Michael, I'll do a little bit of research. I'll have a look at one of my mammals books and they actually do speak about the lion's eyes. I'll have to do that this evening. Sadly, it's in my li with the rest of my books and I shall get back to you hopefully tomorrow. But a very, very interesting question nonetheless. Hello, little one. You see, this little one's also starting to wake up slightly. But I think it's just going to join the rest of the carpet of the lions. Ryan, you're wondering what is wrong with the lion's elbows. You said that they're all black. Now, unfortunately, it's, it's not arm pads for them to go skateboarding. It's, unfortunately, they were plagued by mange. So mange is a parasite that feeds on the hair follicles of the animals. And normally it, it attacks them uh, when they're in a weakened state. And we saw this, of course, in the winter months when the buffalo, w and which were which is what they were mainly feeding on, weren't getting enough nutrients. So unfortunately, their immune systems dropped and they were well, um, by the mange. But this seems to have uh, gotten much better now. 
Uh, I was at one point, a couple of them were completely covered in black. And, and unfortunately, if you have been following, you'll know that the Styx Pride doesn't seem to have too much luck with mange, and they lost their previous set of cubs. But they've got two now, and we'll see if they make it to adulthood. But it is very tough when you get something like mange from your mother uh, almost straight away as a very, very young cub. And this can make it very difficult for your chances of survival. See, there's a lot of cloud cover now, which is proving to be very pleasant. You can see there's not much sunlight, just every now and then the odd beam coming through. And they look a little bit restless, getting, waking up, laying back down on top of each other. There's, my, there's little flip-flop. There's our favorite little lion cub, or well, my favorite little lion cub. But you can see, now this is a good example. She was covered in mange, literally from the tips of her ears right down to the tip of her tail. And you can still see it, the damage around her ears, and you can see those black sort of blotches uh, going down her neck. Uh, but she looks much better. I can promise you, she looks absolutely 110% now. And I think that she will pull 